My guest today on Dolphin Tales is Habib Famudatimi of men's soccer, who is literally in a hotel in North Carolina as they get ready to face off against American University in the opening round of the NCAA Men's Soccer Championship on Thursday evening. And Habib, thanks so much for taking the time. And man, we have a lot to, we have a lot to get over that has happened since the last time we talked, uh, right before the season started. But how, w- what's the excitement level like? What is kind of the last 24 hours since you guys got on the bus, made the trip up to Winston-Salem, North Carolina? What's it been like from the team's perspective? Um, for the past few days, the boys have been buzzing, like, through the roof, you know. Uh, the bu- uh, bus trip, you know, filled with music, laughter, you know, everyone's, it's, there's a lot of togetherness. And uh, so as soon as we get off, everyone's, you know, taking in the moment. And uh, I feel like every team activity, team event that we have throughout the day, everyone's really soaking it in and uh, knowing that it's a, it's a special time. And uh, it's a great moment to, to be playing right now. Uh, not a lot of teams have this opportunity, so we're thankful uh, for real. It is an interesting dynamic. You try and balance the focus that is necessary in order to accomplish the goal that is winning a game in the NCAA tournament, but you also don't want to let the moment go past, right, without you all taking a little time to appreciate where you are and what you accomplished to get here. Yeah, um, definitely uh, our coach spoke about, obviously, you know, taking the moment in, but also being, being focused and being ready. There's a, there's, a, there's a fine line between the two. And uh, I think the boys have been doing a good job of, uh, especially after training today, uh, we really focused on, on ourselves, not so much the, the opponent as yet, because I think um, we realistically have ourselves to beat in this game. You know, um, we're our biggest opponent, honestly. And um, yeah, we've been really focusing on, on how we, how we want to go about tomorrow night and not let the moment slip past us. And it's, it's, it's been good so far. Yeah. Let's go all the way back to, I believe it was, Early to mid-January, you all were back on campus. You were training. Practice started. You were getting ready for this unconventional spring season and had the chance to talk to you as part of a preview series we were doing for the website. And uh, one of the things that got highlighted by both you and Coach Ruiz was was just – the way you all took advantage of that fall and, and didn't look at it as something was taken away from you in the form of a season, but that it was an opportunity to really spend some time, grow together as a team, as a unit, uh, much more time than you would typically get prior to the start of a season. I mean, looking back on that now, do you, how much of an impact do you feel like that actually had on, on your success this season? I think all the success that we had was 100% down to the team. It was not just an individual season for anyone. Uh, every game was a team game that was won or, or lost. Or it was, everything was with a team. So I think that fall really helped us develop that depth between um, each other and uh, just that team chemistry that you can see it on the field. It's, it's, it's really unspoken at times. There's a, there's a lot of intangible things that, that we're succeeding together with as a team. And, um, yeah, I really give it to the fall and – has been an unconventional season, as, as we all know, but I think the boys took the best of it and uh, took advantage of, of the fall that we had. Where did you see things from your perspective when you all hit conference play shift? Because you, you you went through a couple of early season struggles, but but once A-Sun play started, you managed to find a pretty pretty nice rhythm there, especially on the defensive end, but but I think collectively as well. The uh, thing with college, so- uh, college soccer is that uh, there's different seasons. There's uh, You have the, the preseason, then you have your non-conference season, your conference season, and then hopefully your postseason. And I think once that, that shift happened, uh, when we hit uh, the conference season, there was a change in mindset that, listen, this is when, you know, the past is in the past. This is when we have to start getting some Ws along. So obviously we've been, you know, focusing. Things didn't really go our way. But the team really came together in a, in a tough moment, a little dip in, in our performance, and really came together and – we saw the success uh, throughout the conference, you know, obviously uh, winning it all. But I think it was really down to that shift. There was a, there was a, a, me- a mental shift that we had, you know, together. And uh, everyone kind of realized that, listen, we have to make the most of what's coming up this next season that we have, this conference season. And, and uh, we thank God that we did. You brought up how everything has been collective as a team. I mean, all sorts of guys honored on the all-conference team that came out last week, but it really feels like while there's some big names, some big performers, that, that, that the guys that have been running hard in practice all season long that, that don't get the same type of attention on a game day have been just as important. Where, where have you seen 
maybe the, the strength of the collectiveness of you all as a unit? Um, the collective strength is shown um, in our team bonding activities, you know, just wanting to be around the guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of like, like I said, it was just really unspoken, you know, on the field. There's um, uh, an understanding, a connection between every player on every side of the field. And um, some teams don't have that. And I think great teams have that. And uh, we're definitely on our way to, to becoming a great team. You know, we have a, a lot of good individuals, but the collective, uh, that's the thing that every day we're striving to, you know, get better at. And uh, Coach Rees always talks about how good can the collective be. And, uh, you know, he uses the word uh, Ubuntu, which uh, <laughs> is just uh, how, uh, how good we are, you know, as a collective. And uh, we really soaked that in and tried to, because I know personally, I, I think we're only as strong as our weakest player. And I think our weakest player is pretty strong. So, you know, that's, that's the idea of how, you know, our success has been coming through. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the things you guys do to bond, find that, find that nature, gelling nature off, off the field? Uh, we like to listen to the music together, uh, you know, go on, on, on drives together, uh, whether it's uh, going to the senior house and, you know, just seeing what the guys are up to. And um, there's a good locker room feel too. You know, everyone is involved. Everyone, it's an interactive place. You know, everyone has their role in the team. And uh, I, I think the freshmen have really bought into what the seniors are putting down. And um, that's, it's really shown the, again, the collectiveness is really, it's really showing. You bring up the freshmen, so many guys, I mean, uh, from Olivia Correa, Cal Chavez, uh, Neil Ringstrand, and others that have, that have earned recognition for what they've been able to do as, as far as their performances on the field this year, but how did they settle into their roles? How did you all as upperclassmen get them to both perform so well on the field, but then also, you know, buy into everything off of it as well? So, uh, yeah, you just mentioned three really, really good players. And um, we have kind of developed an identity as a, as a team. Uh, this is the way that we want to play. You know, we want to keep the ball and then defensively we want to be really organized and, you know, shut things down. And individually, they're all, you know, really talented players, but they bought into the JU brand that we've put down. And uh, I think that's why they're seeing a lot of success because um, Ollie's a great individual player, you know, on the ball, you know, like to goals. Cal is a great dribbler, you know, take anyone one do on. And, you know, good defender. And he's really filling in uh, his role as the center center back. And uh, I think these guys, and also many more to come, but um, mm -hmm. they're buying into the identity that we've put down, that uh, the leaders on the team have put down. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really helping them out and finding their future role in the team. Yeah. Defensively, you play on the back end, and you all put together a stretch that was just absolutely incredible in conference play as far as holding opponents scoreless at home. Where, and I know it's a sense of pride, but, but how do you take wanting to be that dominant on that side of the ball and, and execute it? What, what was sort of the key to your guys' success back there this season? Uh, it goes down to what we... We start in the training pitch. Uh, we've, as a back line, you know, with Zach Blyce, uh, Neil Ringstrand, uh, Max coming in, and also Kiko Francisco. Um, as a back line, we've, um, we've talked about it a lot, how we just want to be organized. We want to see things early before they happen. And I think there's been many, many times in games where we've seen things happening before that, you know, it's, it's, it's start to come down on our side. And we shut it down, you know, through communication, and um, I don't really think there's been many, many times where we've had our back turn and it's like, it's an old snap moment. Like, mm -hmm. oh, they might, they might, you know, it's been really, really organized and we've been, you know, keeping things in front of us. And again, we've, we've tried to, to keep this kind of identity and uh, as a defensive unit um, from the fall, really. And I guess now that we're seeing it pay dividend in the season, it's, it's been a blessing because sometimes things don't always go the way you plan. But uh, yeah, we've been, we've been fortunate uh, not to concede not many goals this season. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm really not surprised. It comes down to a lot of, a lot of patience and, and hard work. The, the conference tournament has been, you know, well discussed about how, how it came to a conclusion. But just I'm, I'm curious from, from your perspective, as a player's perspective, when you all were dealing with that window between Saturday night when the rain wouldn't abate and the, and the lightning continued and a scoreboard that had you guys down on it to Sunday and a chance to, to get out there, different field, different city, and a chance to try it again. I mean, where were you all and how were you all able to either compartmentalize or, or just process all of that over the course of that just absolutely wild 18 hours or so? Yeah, uh, I think that came 
down to a battle of, of two sides and our side from what I can understand was we were really calm and really mature about the situation. And obviously it was really, it's really weird, you know, that's, it's unprecedented really. Like I've never had a new before, but um, I, in the locker room, I, a lot of guys were calm and, and waiting for what was next, whether it was a, another 45 or another game, whether we had to go play that night or play somewhere else the next day. I think a lot of guys took it in and understood what it was that we still had a game to play. You know, there's still a lot of game to play. And that came down to a lot, a lot of maturity that I won't say I'm surprised with. I'm just, I'm really, really, really thankful for, for, for the teammates that I have because uh, you don't get that a lot. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's, it was a battle of the two sides. And then the next day, uh, an opportunity fell into our laps that, um, you know, we're thankful for. And it just came down to taking the most, you know, of the opportunity because uh, coaching staff saw something different. And, you know, we were able to, to change the way we approached that game and it worked out. What's been the most fun moment that you personally have had over the course of the last oh, week and a half now? Uh, um, so we've had some time to soak in uh, the championship, and um, but we have to move past it because now we have another opportunity to, to hopefully do that again. But uh, the most fun, I would say, I think it was right as soon as that whistle went, the final whistle went on Sunday. And just the joy, you know, the shirts coming out, seeing the trophy and, you know, being able to hold that and seeing the, uh, the goals that we set and the vision that we had as a team, as a player on the team. It was just, this is, the, this is the moment, you know, that we've been looking forward to for a year and a half now. And, you know, this is it. And, uh, yeah, the, I still haven't come down from that high, but, uh, you know, just, <laughs> we're just prepared to move, to move on, you know, and uh, enjoy it at a later time. Do you have any idea what the emotions might be going through your mind when you when you take the pitch on Thursday evening for that for that NCAA tournament match? Uh, I know I can speak for a lot of guys when I say this. We're we're doing what we love to do, you know. And now it's on a it's on a bigger stage. And it's a national tournament, you know. It's, we're just happy not we're, just, we're happy to be here, but we want to make the most of the opportunity that we have. And uh, we're, you know, we're playing we're playing soccer, we're playing football, doing exactly what we love to do. I feel like I'm exactly where I should be. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just buzzing really to, to get started tomorrow night. Well, I hope this is certainly just the next chapter in what is a, an excellent story to tell as the men's soccer program faces off against American on Thursday night, 6 o'clock, airing on ESPN3. And Habib Famudatimi, you'll be out there on the back end helping, helping hopefully post a clean sheet and, and advance uh, on to face the Clemson Tigers after that. Uh, thanks for the time. Enjoy this moment as it continues. And, and best of luck on Thursday evening. Appreciate that, Scott. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man.